very well. How the secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest man will kill me now. A corpse should be left well alone. Happy New Year everyone, welcome to 2023 and the first ever instalment of Bloodborne Models. This has been long overdue and so many of you have urged me to move into the Bloodborne world. Well, here I am. And this is a very special episode to me, as you can tell by the title of the video already. This is a statue of Lady Maria that I printed and painted for Jack Septicai. He reached out to me on Instagram last year and asked if I could do a Lady Maria for him as it's his favorite boss. So here we are. Now, before we move on, I will confess this was filmed last year before I moved my setup around, before I rearranged my cameras and before I had myself mic'd up whilst painting. So. We're back in the old days of me just laying down a voiceover over the top of me painting. So you can already tell that what I'm saying isn't matching up to what I'm doing because I'm not doing it as I'm saying it. You know, I've only just gotten around to editing it, but I thought what better way to bring in the new year than to do some Bloodborne. I also designed some new intro graphics for this series, so I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, that's enough of an intro. Let's get into painting arguably the best boss in Bloodborne. Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. So first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this wooden base and just use some brown tones and mix in some yellows, some oranges and some reds for that kind of natural woodish hue. Now onto a wet palette, I'm loading up some Rhinox Hide as the dark brown base, some Mournfang Brown to be the mid-tone, some Catacan Flesh for a tone between those two and some Zandri Dust for highlights. Then some Mephiston Red, Troll Slayer Orange and Avalon Sunset for our warm tones, and finally some Abaddon Black for the shadows. And to start things off, we're basing the wood with some Rhinox Hide all over the base. Then I'm using some Mournfang Brown to add light to the middle as I want it to be fading out towards the darker tones of the edges. Then I'm just putting some Zandri Dust into the middle of that as the brightest point, and I'll start working in some of the warm tones into this wood to areas within the Mournfang Brown. Now, with those colors applied, I'm just blending them all together to create this kind of like radial blend thing you see here. Then I can take a small brush and start applying some highlights to the edges of the wood planks, adding in some lighter streaks for a bit of texture and some Abaddon Black to use for shading. Then for the studs in the planks, I'm basing them with some Iron Warriors and highlighting them with some Iron Breaker. Then just to finish off the base, I'm going around the edge pattern, just filling it in with some Iron Warriors. Bam, one base done. Now for her little side table for her little glass of blood or red wine, whatever it is that she's drinking, I don't know. So I'm just gonna load up the same wood tones to the wet palette. Then same method as the base, just getting a first good coat of Rhinox Hide onto the table, then create a lighter center in the middle of it with some Mournfang Brown, and then moving up into the lighter Zandri Dust tone. I'm making sure I keep the paint quite thin and wet on the model so I can easily do some wet blending between the tones before they actually dry on the model. Then just with some Abaddon Black, I'm using some thin layers of it just for the darker tones and shading around the edges and the sort of bits that are sunken in. And once that's done, it's just a case of repeating the same process across the rest of the table, including the underside, the legs and the bars supporting the tray at the bottom. And for the chalice, I'll base it with some lead belcher in and around the goblet, to which I can then highlight it and edge highlight it with some runefang steel. Same goes for the tray sitting next to it. Then I'm just taking my warm tones and a dry brush and gently just stroking on some streaks onto the top of the table for a bit of sort of added texture. Same again with the Abaddon Black on a fine brush to add some wood texture in. Now to finish off the table, I'll be coating the tray on the bottom with some Iron Warriors to fit in with the same colors that are on the items on the top of the table table done, now onto the chair. Same wood colours again onto the wet palette, same as before, basing the wood with Rhinox Hide, 
You can probably see that I'm using a reference image of an old antique wooden chair on my phone just to try and figure out how this sort of thing looks and how light reflects on it. Then I'm just going to take some black and I'm going to be mixing it into the brown just to create a darker tone and apply that to the middle part of the outer frame of the chair. Then with some Mornfang Brown, I'm highlighting these little rivets around the frame to sort of bring them out and make them stand out against the darker wooden tones. Taking the same base color, I'm detailing in the top wooden decals that sort of sit at the top here and repeating that to the other side of the chair as well. Then just using Mornfang Brown again to add highlights to the middle of the curves. Same goes for the arms of the chair, making sure I'm edge highlighting with the Mornfang Brown and using it to detail in little streaks with highlights and shadows for a more natural look. To finish off the chair, it's just applying the same techniques as before to the base. Now for the fabric sitting in the center of it, I'm going to add some blue to sort of contrast against the blood we'll be adding later. So I'm going to start off by loading some Cantor blue, Dark Reaper and Thousand Suns blue to the wet palette. So just base the fabric with Cantor blue nice and easy and I'll just use some of the Thousand Suns blue to highlight these little fabric stretches in the material just on the sort of like top side of them as if the light was hitting them from above. Then I can take some of the Dark Reaper and a bit of black mixed into it to create the shadow tones and just gently apply this on the underside of the stretches to create these little shadows. And with that, that's all the furniture done. Now we can move on to Maria. So onto a clean wet palette, I am loading up some leather tones, which will be some Abaddon Black for our darker shadows. Mechanica's Standard Grey for the grey toned leather, some Rhinox Hide for the dark brown shading of it, some Mornfang Brown for the lighter leather tone, and finally some Administratum Grey for that grey leather highlighting. To begin, I'm basing her coat with some Mechanica's Standard Grey and then adding in highlights to the material with some Administratum Grey. Then just doing the same thing to the parts of the arms that sit between the shoulders and the gloves, I'm basing with Mechanica Standard Grey and highlighting the outermost wrinkles in the material with some Administratum Grey. Then moving on to the brown leather, I'm basing the trousers with some Rhinox Hide and then adding Mornfang Brown to the center regions and blending between the two to create a nice smooth gradient between the browns. Then I'm copying that same method to her gloves as well. Once the gloves and trousers are done, I'm going to apply the same colors to the boots, making sure that the Mornfang Brown acts as the brighter tone on the outermost parts of the boots and blending from the center outwards. Once the boot is done, I'm painting the laces with some Zandru dust and I can just replicate all of these previous steps onto the second boot. I have to then just do the same to the hat and the collar, making sure that I use brighter tones to do some edge highlighting. Then for the feather in the hat, I want to base it with some Corax white so I can then color it with some Wraithbone to give that kind of off white tone to it. With that done, next up is the skin, and I'm basing it with some Bugman's Glow to act as the darker shade of skin tone, and then some Cajun Flesh Tone, which will be the main skin color, to which we can then use some Kisler Flesh to be the highlight of the skin. Then I can just mix in some Corax White to bring in the extreme highlighting. So just starting off with a layer of Bugman's Glow and basing the whole face with it. Moving then into the Cajun flesh tone to mix into the main areas of the face that aren't in shadow and blending that out to the Bugman's glow. Then it's onto the Kisler flesh and a bit of white to bring out those brighter tones on places like the cheeks, the nose and the chin. Next up is her hair and I'm going to be basing this with some Corax white. And then for the main color within the hair, I'm mixing together some contrast medium and Eandin yellow contrast to about a 50-50 mix to be the kind of blonde color and applying that over the Corax white. Then I can highlight this yellowish tone with some Ushbati bone just to bring some of that saturation down a little bit. 
For the metal decals on her coat, I'm going to detail them in with some Retributor armor, as they appear to be a kind of gold-like metal. Now for the most important part of the model, the blood. And for this, I'm using coagulated blood from Green Stuff World. And I'll start off by applying this to her neckerchief, which was previously painted with some Ushpati bone, and I just forgot to tell you. Then for her sword, I'm just using some lead belcher as a base, and then I can use some rune fang steel and a dry brush to just dust on some bright highlights to the weapon. And really, that kind of just about does it for our first ever Bloodborne model. Now I'm just going to tidy up around her so that we can finish off the model by applying some coats of varnish. I'll be applying a whole coat of gloss varnish to all of the wooden parts and all of the leather parts, and I'll use some matte varnish for the fabric on the chair and for her hair. And now that it's varnished, Lady Maria is complete. I just need to get her glued into the chair and onto the base. I decided to not go with the candlestick that you saw at the beginning because I just kind of felt like it cluttered the base up a bit too much. And there we are, really. That's a job well jobbed. Now, as of speaking, currently, right now, she is on her way to her new home with Sean, where I'm sure she'll be well taken care of. And we will be sure to update you later down the line how she's getting on. But from me, that about does it for this first ever episode of the Bloodborne series. Thank you all for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed it. From today, every Sunday from now on will be Bloodborne Sundays, and I will continue with my Dark Souls and Elden Ring models every Wednesday, starting off 2023, and we're back on two videos a week. So with all that said, I look forward to seeing you all this Sunday for some more Bloodborne models. Peace out, gang, and don't you dare go hollow.